Today we're back with a fresh run of NHL trade rumors, including the latest of Jack Johnson, Evander Kane, Paul Martin, Nicholas Chalmerson, and a few guys with the Ottawa Senators. And that's coming up next. Welcome back to another video here, Top Shelf Hockey. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. If you love unbiased hockey talk on all 31 NHL teams, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So diving into the latest NHL trade rumors, it looks like there could be a number of veteran defensemen available uh, for teams to pick up before the upcoming NHL trade deadline. Let's start with the newest one. Jack Johnson apparently has requested a trade away from the Columbus Blue Jackets. Now Johnson's in the final year of his contract, and apparently this, uh, even though it wasn't really made public until the last day or two, this goes back to the end of the summer and into the fall here as uh, the season began. Apparently contract negotiations on an extension didn't go well back in August, September, and apparently, um, you know, Johnson's also having a tough year in Columbus as well. Uh, I don't think, and there, I, I've seen some reports saying that he's kind of fallen out of favor with John Tortorella. But I don't think that's the case. Now, I know his ice time is down a little bit compared to the years before, but I'm not sure that it's a case of falling out of favor with the coach. Um, I know after seeing some comments from some recent uh, uh, local Columbus fans that attend a lot of the games and stuff, and I know they, they don't seem to think that he's falling out of favor with the coach. Anyways, Johnson wants out. Now, of course, he's at an age of his career. This might be his, uh, his last long-term deal should he get one. He's at an age now, uh, you know, once you get up around a 30 year mark or better, he's probably looking for a five, six, seven year deal. Uh, and as we all know, Johnson's had a lot of personal struggles off the ice, dealing with a bankruptcy and all the issues with his parents and all that. So we know that he's obviously, as all NHL players are concerned for their financial well being, uh, I think he has a little bit more of a vested interest in that than most guys, considering his circumstances. So obviously, he's going to want to negotiate one last longer term big money deal here if he's able to do so and I think at some point he'll get a, definitely get a deal from somebody but at this point it looks like he's going to be traded out of Columbus I would expect it's probably going to happen between now and the deadline as he's the type of defenseman even though he's not really a top pairing guy he could be a second or third pairing guy in a lot of teams um, and he has a lot of experience including international competition so I think that has to come out of value as well so a couple of teams that I think might be interested even though there hasn't really been any confirmed rumors or reports linking the two. I think a team like the Toronto Maple Leafs should have a long look at Johnson, as well as even Boston as well. Um, there could be some teams in the West, but personally I think those two teams are really looking for help on the back end. And now they could be interested in some of these other defensemen we're going to talk about here in the next segment. But at the same time, Johnson probably is one of the better ones available right now, uh, considering the names that have been floating around in the trade rumors. Tell me, where do you think Jack Johnson is going to end up? Do you think uh, Columbus is going to end up trading him? By the sounds of things, I think he sure is going to get traded. Just a matter of, of when um, and where. So I think between now and the trade deadline, we're going to see Johnson on the move. And if I were the Toronto Maple Leafs, Lou Lamarillo, I'd be picking up the phone and taking a look at this guy. Your team needs defense. If you want to make a run in the playoffs, even guys like Morgan Riley, even though they're you know proving themselves on the offensive side of things, Riley's been helping the team a lot on the offensive side. And he's been the GOAT a few nights as well, uh, you know, causing the game-winning goals to go in on the other side. You get Jake Gardner, who's a bit of a liability at times too. Um, you know, a lot of the guys, if they're young, they're still developing. They do have an offensive upside, but they could use some help on the back end. And, you know, Johnson might be a guy to look at where he doesn't have a lot of a term left. You know, you only got to write about the rest of the year. And then you can evaluate from there what you do next season. So I think Toronto and Boston are the teams that most likely should take a look at this guy. But that's just my opinion. Uh, we'll see where he ends up in the coming days. But leave some comments down below. Do you think Johnson's going to get traded? And where do you see him going? All right, moving on. There's lots of other uh, veteran defensemen that are apparently available. Some that we've touched on before and some that are new names coming up. Uh, San Jose Sharks defenseman Paul Martin uh, coming back from injury. He still has one more year left in his contract. When he first signed up the Sharks, he ended up getting a long-term deal. And I believe he's uh, a little over $4 million per season. Uh, so that one might be a little bit trickier to move, but I believe they have seven or eight defensemen now that he's healthy um, that can play. So they definitely could use some help up front. So it only makes sense they try to maybe move him, maybe to help land the forward. Uh, the San Jose Sharks have been linked uh, to uh, one of the biggest UFAs out there, one of the top on the trade bait board, Evander Kane. 
So we might as well jump here into Kane. I mean, I'm not sure Buffalo is going to be looking for Paul Martin as the, the return, but maybe Martin could be packaged with um, some other um, prospects or player roster players to help them get this deal. I mean, obviously, uh, Martin, uh, if they can take that contract on, depending on what they work out for a deal, uh, you know, obviously that's not going to get Buffalo excited to move Kane uh, out to San Jose, but they have been apparently showing high, heavy interest in Kane. And maybe Martin's a guy that gets included in that deal. Hard to say. Maybe it's something separate. But where he does have a year left on his contract at uh, four plus million, that will be tougher to move than some. Now in Arizona, uh, obviously one of the guys they brought in this year with some of the deals they made was Nicholas Chalmerson. Chalmerson's had great uh, success when he was with the Blackhawks. Uh, now in Arizona, the season hasn't gone very well, and it's, you can't entirely say that it's, it's just him having a bad year. I think you could say that he is having a bad year, but it's certainly not all on him. Obviously, the team isn't very good. So there's lots of things that play there as to say why things aren't working out for Chalmerson. But I think it's safe to say that uh, pretty good chance Nicholas Chalmerson would be on the move. I mean, when you have guys like Johnson and Chalmerson and Martin, you know, these guys all have experience. When you guys have teams looking to add depth for the playoffs, you know, these are the type of guys you want. Uh, like I said, Martin might be the tougher one to move because of the contract, but... At the same time, there's lots of uh, defense uh, available out there, and there's certainly one of the areas that a lot of teams, uh, defense and center icemen are the ones we typically see the most teams looking to add towards the deadline. So lots of guys available there. So, you know, go back to Vander Kane here for a moment. Obviously, the San Jose Sharks have been one of the teams that have been rumored to have heavy interest in Kane. I think another team that keeps coming up as well is the St. Louis Blues. I know we've mentioned this before. Based on what Buffalo appears to be looking for, it seems like they're going to want... One to either a roster player, a prospect, and a first-round pick, or a couple of key prospects and a first-round pick. Now, St. Louis does have a nice um, cupboard full of high-end prospects that could play. Uh, I can see them maybe working out a deal. Maybe they get one or two prospects, uh, or at least one anyways, with a current roster player. But I think a lot of teams, uh, if they're going to meet Buffalo's asking price, they're going to want an extension signed. Um, based on what Buffalo's asking for, I just don't see that um, going down as a rental situation without uh, without an extension being done there. It just doesn't. I don't. You know, I can't see them giving up a couple of key prospects and a first round pick for a rental. But you just never know. Teams get crazy and they think that they have a shot at the Stanley Cup. So you know, obviously, it's something you want to be in win now mode. And you have a chance to do it. You don't worry too much about your future now. You worry about it later. And sometimes you see some crazy deals, just like you see a free agency in July first. Teams do some crazy things sometimes when they think it's going to get them the illustrious Stanley Cup victory. So now moving back on to the Ottawa Senators. The Ottawa Senators obviously having an up and down season for the most part down, a little bit up lately. Uh, they're kind of in that win a couple, lose one, win a couple, lose one mode. Obviously, the recently they they've won more than they've lost in the last four or five games. But the one that they did lose against the Hawks was quite a stinker when they lost eight to two. So it seems like they went string a couple of nice wins together and then they just get embarrassed again. So there's obviously still consistency issues here. Goaltending is a big part of it. When Craig Anderson's on, they have a chance to win. And when he's not, they don't. It's just that simple. I mean, goaltending is a big issue for Ottawa this year. You keep hearing Zach Smith, Mike Hoffman, Jean-Gabriel Pajot. And, you know, obviously people aren't going to be interested in the goalies when they're not doing well, which obviously makes sense especially with the, where they each have a couple of years uh, term contracts remaining as well. So from what I can gather from the Ottawa Senators' perspective right now, they seem to be happy just to sit tight and kind of stay in a holding pattern. I mean, their team has been up and down. I personally don't think they should just tear it down and get crazy here. I think they could make a few subtle moves and probably go a long way. Uh, if I were Ottawa, I'd be careful. I mean, Smith, I can see a guy. It's a little bit easier to replace, but Hoffman is a little bit more of a unique talent. That shot and that ability, that quick release and ability to score, that's something they should hang on to. But if they can move guys like Smith or even like an Alex Burrows or Johnny Oduya, you know, uh, kind of flush out some of these older contracts, you know, even Dion Phaneuf, um, you know, Dion has a no trade clause, which he certainly exercised this uh, past expansion draft, so he wouldn't have any chance going to Vegas, which led to them losing Mark Mathot. And he, he has on his list, I believe it's uh, 10 or 12 teams that he can be traded to. And I can pretty much guarantee Pierre Dorian will be checking in with those guys to see if there's a deal that can be done. As much as they like Dion, they don't like his contract. Their first couple of years, that contract wasn't so bad because when they picked him up, they shipped out some bad contracts themselves. 
But now that those contracts would have been expired, now they're at a point in the term where it's, you know, not so uh, not so favorable anymore. So that's the Ottawa Senators' perspective. So with all these latest trade rumors, leave some comments down below. What do you see happening here? I mean, obviously there's a lot of defensemen available. Uh, defense is a key position, especially when you have veterans that have experience. So between Chalmerson, Martin, and Johnson, do you see them getting moved? And if so, what do you think is the most likely destination? Leave some comments down below for sure. I want to hear your thoughts as always. I gave you mine. Now it's time for you guys to let me know what you think. Don't forget as well to follow us on social media. You'll see our link to our Twitter account right here. We're also on Facebook and on Instagram. All social media links are in the description down below. So certainly check those accounts out. And please consider following us on those platforms as well. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. We have daily uploads with lots of unbiased hockey talk. Thanks very much for watching everybody. We'll catch you next time.